Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a review video. I am going to be reviewing the book Imperfect Arrangements by Frances Mensah Williams. You would have heard me mention this book before because I talked about it in my May book haul when I hauled it and I don't think I have done my recent reads video which contains which that book would have fallen into so it's probably going to be the next video up after this actually um but today i'm going to be doing a full review for that book i have read a book by francis in the past which is from pasta to pig book which i did speak about in a recent reads video and i absolutely adored that book if you are interested in the written review of this book i have done a written review on goodreads um i mentioned perhaps in my may haul video that i was kindly sent this by francis um and in this video whilst i'm going to do a full review of it i have invited francis to read us the synopsis for the book I thought it'd just be a really nice way for you to meet Francis and get a feel for the author behind the book. So it is still quarantine season and I am obviously based in Scotland and I'm pretty sure Francis is based in London so I have invited Francis to record herself um, speaking about the book and reading out the synopsis and I will just be editing it into this video so don't worry. No quarantine rules have been broken. So yeah I'm gonna insert the clip and introduce you to Francis and then I will be back to give my review of this book. Hi everyone, thank you for that introduction. So I'm Frances Mensah Williams and um, yeah, I thought I would tell you a little bit about my latest book, Imperfect Arrangements. And I know you're gonna hear the review in a moment, so fingers crossed, it is loved. Um, what is the story about? So let me read you the back. It's probably the quickest way to do this. There are two sides to every story. In the sun-soaked capital of Ghana, three best friends struggle with the arrangements that define their relationships. Ambitious Teresa has gambled everything to move with her husband Tyler from London to cosmopolitan Accra. But when shocking developments threaten their plans, they also expose the hidden cracks in her fairy tale marriage. Feisty Maku is desperate for professional recognition and her dream wedding. But how long can she wait for her laid-back partner, Norte, to stop dreaming up pointless projects and stand up to his family? Church-going Lila married Quissy in haste. But while she battles her attraction to the mysterious Reuben, her husband has bitten off more than he can chew with his latest mistress. Facing lies, betrayal and shattered illusions, each couple must confront the truth of who they have become and the arrangements they have enabled. Against the backdrop of a shifting culture, each woman must decide what and who she is willing to sacrifice for the perfect marriage. Thank you. Imperfect arrangements. Thank you Francis very much for that review. I hope you guys enjoyed getting the chance to meet Francis. I will be doing an in conversation with Francis later, maybe this video will be on my channel in about a week and a half or so um it will definitely be a couple of videos after so please stay tuned for that if you like the sound of this book so because francis has given us the synopsis i will not be reading that out um i will say at this point though if you are interested in reading this book and you don't want to hear any spoilers then i would turn away but other than that i am just going to talk about this book um in depth i'm not going to talk about it in so much depth that like you know it completely ruins everything but if you want to go into the book absolutely knowing nothing i would switch off now and i will put time stamps when i talk about like sort of my thoughts when i come off the sort of deeper dive of the book the reason i want to deep dive into each of their stories is because i feel like each of these ladies are gifted with really empowering stories that you know tackle womanhood that tackle friendships and i just really want to talk about them a little bit more and give you a feel for the different situations that these all these women find themselves in i've written some notes so i will be looking down below occasionally so if you see me doing that that's what i'm doing so in the synopsis that francis read she mentions that teresa is incredibly amb ambitious and that is like teresa to a t like the ambitious woman not like the cutthroat ruthless ambition woman, ambitious woman but she is definitely incredibly ambitious the book alternates between her and her husband Tyler and how they're settling down in Accra so they have moved from London to Accra I believe it is Teresa's mother or perhaps um Teresa's father actually yeah it was her father that's from Ghana and I think she lived there for a little bit once they moved when she was about five or something like that so basically Teresa and Tyler have both moved to Accra to set up new businesses Teresa's business is a PR firm and Tyler's is I think is sort of property management um he's either building property and people fill in the space or yeah I think that's along the root of what his business idea is and their story is basically about how these businesses works and basically 
I don't know how these businesses also don't work. So uh, two huge spanners are thrown into the works of sort of making their dreams come true. Um, you find out one of them very early on and the other one it happens as the book progresses. But basically one person's plan really takes off and the others doesn't and it's about that sort of partnership and support that you need to offer your partner when things don't really go to plan um on the outside Teresa and Tyler are very enviable like they've got a really nice house they've come from a very busy city they've come from London the city um they have loads of money well so it seems I mean it's not like they're poor or they ever go broke in the store or anything like that but you know they're not a struggling couple their story really aims to show communication in a relationship um, and what it's like when you guys don't really communicate. So despite the fact that they have this enviable lifestyle, a lot of trouble is brewing underneath the surface. Like the both of them just, there's lots of slamming doors, lots, loads of silence, loads of just things not said. And yeah, they have a real issue with communication. But a lot of this communication, I think definitely comes from Teresa's side. Um, she is heavily impacted by her upbringing um, with her mum and her dad um, and I think her expectations of Tyler are definitely affected by what happened to her when she was growing up and how she very much needs like a man to be in a strong position and not like sort of deviate from that strong man position. Um, I've written here that their story is more about ambition, family support and marriage um, and definitely support and marriage go hand in hand but I think their story really brings to light those sort of marriage vows that you take when it's through thick and thin um, and how marriage is very much a partnership and how you really do need to support your partner at times when you don't think you'll see them in the positions that you see them in, that you find them in it, in fact. I'm going to talk a bit more about like that situation with Teresa later, more when I talk about my thoughts on it because I very much felt as I was reading the book that I related to a lot, a lot of what Teresa was saying and feeling, but then her friends were like the voice of reason and I was like, that is completely correct. Um, so I really enjoyed Teresa's story. I think it's a really good um, depiction of like the modern day woman and perhaps the struggles that you find when you yourself feel you're super like rooted or successful and actually there comes a point in your marriage where perhaps the other person isn't and you, how do you deal with that? You took a vow through thick and thin, so you can't really then slip away and be like, well, this isn't who I thought you were. Um, and it's also about that, just the changing landscape of a marriage. But like I said, more on that later. The other character is Maku um, and her husband, Naughty. I thought she was a really wonderful character to read about, but she is someone like, I think me and her would not get on. She clashes it with Teresa a lot, and I feel like, the reasons why she clashes with Teresa is the reasons why I also felt like when I was reading her, like, what, what are you talking about? So I definitely feel like she'd be very frustrated at me as she was at Teresa. Again, we alternate between Maku and her husband, Naughty. Maku's from a really small village and I think she moved to Accra when she was 19 and that's where she met Naughty and then she fell pregnant and they had their first baby. She then goes on to have, I think, two other children very early on and it very much disrupts her career. She's very much a career-driven person as well. She works in like finance, accounting sort of thing, um, but obviously the babies disrupt it and there's a very traditional like sort of way of life in place in sort of her family structure. A lot of Maku's stories actually to deal with the fact that she is married to Naughty traditionally, but she hasn't had like a white wedding and doesn't like wear an engagement ring or a wedding band. So in Ghana, you can have a traditional wedding, which is just basically an agreement between the two families. They usually do have a celebration and a party and things like that. But I think it's not the legal version where you would wear a wedding ring and an engagement ring and you get go down to the registry office and, and such. So most people like in Ghana and like in here people who've obviously moved um will have like basically two weddings which is kind of fun um so that is a lot of Maku's story the fact that she really wants a white wedding and she hasn't had that and Maku and Maku Naughty doesn't seem to be bothered and also Naughty's family are just like you should be glad he married you because his family are awful to her like they are just uh, the horrible in-laws they have a very very little respect for Maku and they're always referring to her as a bush girl because she comes from a very small village so they just think she's from the bush and she's not with of today so they don't really think that Maku is deserving of naughty so they believe anything that happens then she should just accept it another aspect of Maku's story is very which is very interesting is the fact that yeah she is very ambitious and determined and she wants to get ahead in her career but she can't obviously she's taking loads of time off from maternity leave but also she needs a set of qualifications so that she can advance higher so throughout the story she embarks on like a basically a college course to or something similar um to gain that qualification so she's basically juggling her motherhood, juggling her career, her horrible like um, mother-in-law and family-in-law, and also her husband. Like she really does love her husband, but she does wish that he would sometimes step up to the plate and perhaps take care of the children a little bit more, not spend so much time in the pub and things like that. So she's also bouncing a lot, and it's a lot of her stories are very much the sort of traditional, um, I guess, 
family roles or expect societal expectations that are like sort of present in Ghana versus like Teresa's who's very like liberal and like very westernized and like the expectations she has of Tyler. Maku and Teresa therefore always really clash because Maku feels like Teresa has so much of an expectation of Tyler and she's just like you know he has a good job he brings money like why do you place all of these demands on him she's like you should be lucky that he's doing all of these things without being asked like you know you're so used to western men but like men are not like that so yeah Maku and Teresa clash a lot because of their sort of expectations of what a man should do and it's it's very interesting to see actually and like I said we do get to hear from Naughty we get to hear from Naughty and we get to sort of hear why like he allows his family to treat him like crap treat his wife like crap um and I do have to say like their relationship was really lovely and it does have a really Really nice sort of ending and yeah they're just really cute and like Francis has done for all the characters it really takes you through their marriage shows you the ups and downs and shows you I guess the kind of compromise which I think is incredibly important the final story is about Lida and hers is by far the saddest story and it really showcases how much of a shell a woman can be when she like chooses to punish herself for something that she perceives is incredibly wrong um and yeah it brings to light a very interesting topic but I won't like spoil that for you um but I think out of all three of them, Lila was the most enviable per se, because if we look at Teresa, who is enviable from the fact that she's come from a Western country and moved back and, you know, her and her husband are like setting up businesses and success and things like that. Then we have Lila, who actually embodies both um, Teresa and Maku, kind of. She married a Ghanaian man. She sort of, she was born in Ghana. She stayed there like her whole life. I think she went to study abroad for a bit, but she came back. She married a very successful and um, attractive Ghanaian man in addition to marrying a Ghanaian man. So out of the three, I think you look at her and think that she is the most enviable one. They have a really nice house as well. Um, they're very well off. So you look at her and you think, great. And she's also a church going woman. So she's very much into God. She's always taught talked about how like slim and slender she is um so you you really do think on the surface that everything is great but we know that she is desperate for a child she's been with her husband for six years and she hasn't had a baby yet and she's desperate for one and we know that her husband falls around like you like you hear from what Francis says that he's in hot water with his mistress and yeah you just know that her life is not really good it's not as good as it looks like um and obviously she is attracted to Reuben at her church and she also has a horrible mother-in-law as well what you learn very early on in the story is that Lila is punishing herself like I said for something that happened in her past um, and honestly when I was reading this book and seeing her relationship with her husband and the fact that you know she very much knew her husband was cheating on her I really did wonder why she even wanted to have a baby with him and why she'd want to bring a baby into that situation um, and yeah I just kind of couldn't put my finger on it she just felt like really cold and devoid of everything like even when she went to visit her friends like she'd be going through so much and she wouldn't share any of that with them I just felt like not yeah i just feel that she felt a bit cold but also i just knew that she was also punishing herself and it just seemed to be really sad i think a lot of that is added by the fact that we know she is getting skinny and skinnier by the day and she doesn't eat a lot there is no sort of suggestion of an eating disorder it's just the fact that she's just not interested in a lot of things um and you know life just was really glum for her um so you kind of do think that's like another reason as to why she isn't falling pregnant because there is actually no like sort of complications or anything wrong with her uterus all of that really adds to the sort of cold sort of feel about her and just the sadness about her life i think one of the only times we really ever see her sort of come to life but even then she's sort of like distancing herself is when she's at church and when she is around Reuben who is a guy that is at her church um so it's really that line of like the fact that she's very much religious so she doesn't believe in adultery even though the fact that you know her husband is cheating on her and she knows her husband is cheating on her she's not willing to cross that line it's just that sense of more punishment for her like why will you not allow yourself to be happy especially when the man you're with clearly he's he's not interested in you like you hear from Francis um her husband does end up in hot water with his mistress and that has plays a huge impact on their lives and plays a huge impact on their lives in terms of in terms of even the way um his her mother-in-law is just like the suggestions she makes which is absolutely ridiculous but it basically forces Lila to a sort of like tipping point I suppose um should she stay with her husband or should she sort of move towards this new thing that could make her really happy I think Lila's story is definitely more a story of like 
personal and like self-development and whether or not you believe you should be happy she was staying with her husband despite all the bad things that he was doing because she felt that's what she deserved for something that had happened in her past so it was a very interesting story and it was like the kind of middle way point but I just yeah I was reading the book and I just couldn't understand I just kept thinking drop that man and go and be with Ruben because he seems wonderful and yeah so I won't spoil that story for anyone but it's all very lovely when things sort of come to a nice end for all three characters. So I guess now what I'm going to do is just give you my thoughts about the book and just run through. So I guess the first thing I'm going to touch on is what I talked about in Teresa's story, which is about ambition and support. Um, so like I said, um, Teresa is super ambitious. And I think one of the things that Teresa sort of neglects to see is that people aren't always going to be at their top all the time and you have to sort of realize that and accept that and know that that doesn't mean that's where they're also always going to be when they're at their sort of lowest i feel like Teresa learned a real lesson from her friends and from her relationship in terms of what support really means and what it means to be in a marriage and a partnership um obviously she is married and she's taken vows um but i think this applies to whether you're married or you're in a relationship it's just that level of things aren't always going to always be up and you're going to need to ride it out with the person that you're with um and without i can't really give away too much of the book and spoil it for you but i think Frances was really able to depict that lesson um, and show that marriage is not just ups, ups and ups. There are going to be downs and you're going to have to really ride it out. And I thought it was really important, especially for someone like me. I really do think <laughs> in a similar way to Teresa. So reading that, I was just like, I'm so glad she has people there to sort of be like can you look at it in a different way because I also have people that are sort of like can you look at it in a different way and I think it's really important I think it's really easy sometimes to just think oh no like I can't really deal with this or because x is happening it's like my childhood and therefore like I can't have this situation which is very much what the, the situation for Teresa and I think it was really good that her, par her parents her friends were able to say like your husband is not your father he's not like gonna abandon you and you need to support him right now I think it's very important to have people that are gonna say that to you and be like these are the marriage vows you took and it's not always gonna be peachy the second thing I want to touch on is a sort of tradition versus I guess like western sort of ideologies um it was very much done through the presence of Maku's story um Maku <sighs> Yeah, Maku accepts a lot of things that I would not accept, but it's just one of the things that in the book she also fights against in terms of when she's talking to Teresa because of the fact that, you know, she's like, your husband works, like he goes out, he's allowed to go out, have a drink or stay out for a bit if he wants, like you shouldn't be telling him basically what to do. Um, Maku's husband basically, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't deal with this, like he rarely ever looks after the kids or anything like that and when he does, like he does it a little bit begrudgingly. He goes to the pub with his friends like every week, um, every week, every weekday. Um, and it's just a bit odd. I feel like when Maka goes back to school, he doesn't even like really decide, okay, right, these sort of these things are gonna change. I'm not gonna have more time to go to the pub. I might actually have to, you know, pick up the kids and stuff like that. None of that like sort of comes into his head and Oh, it burns me because I see it in the sort of relationships in my family and personally that's not something I could deal with so when I'm reading Matthew's story I'm thinking I've, I would tell this man leave the pub and come home right now um so that's how she clashes with Teresa a lot and that really comes back to tradition and the way that sort of yeah I want to say I want to say I'm just going to speak for Ghana but the way that relationships and like gender roles are viewed in Ghana and like what you expect of your man like as long as you've got a house over your head he's not beating you he's not doing all these negative things and actually everything else can get a bit of a pass you know it's the woman's responsibility to like look after the kids provide food for them make sure they're well dressed and all these sorts of things even if she is then also working at the same time like I think in the story I'd be okay with the kind of gender roles that they were proposing or that Maki was accepting if she also wasn't working I'd be like okay fine like if that's what you've chosen but the fact that she was also working it was just a bit like so why is the expectation then that you're both working but he also does nothing um so there was a lot of sort of tradition thrown in there with sort of I guess modern day society because then Teresa was just like I don't really understand why he doesn't help you more or things like that and they really clashed a lot they had you know actual arguments in the story about that and yeah I guess I really related to that because growing up with a Ghanaian mum and growing up with a Ghanaian family like I very much see the expectation that is from women and you know even things that my mum has just said to me about certain things I'm just like I'm, I'm not doing that just I'm not doing that just because I'm a woman and just because he's a man like 
that seems insane to me. Like I've watched my mother and my sister do certain things just because that's how it's done. And I'm just like, well, that seems stupid. Like if you're in a partnership, I think they should be willing to support you and pick up the slack. But it just happens that they just don't do certain things. I really found that I was getting really frustrated, but I could also see it was just a case of tradition. And I guess what I really liked from Mackie's point of view was she accepted that and that was fine with her. She didn't really have any huge resentment towards Naughty because of that, because that she, she also agreed with that and that was like fine for her. <laughs> I very much sat on Teresa's side because I was like, that would not roll <laughs> where I roll. So it was a very interesting book for me to see because obviously being born here and having a mum from Ghana, she brings those expectations to me and to here and I'm just like here like, nah, that's not gonna run. <laughs> and someone born, not even because I'm born here, I just think regardless, I'd be like, that's not gonna run. Like, if we're gonna have children, this is gonna be a partnership and you're gonna support me, you're gonna do half, we're gonna do half and half. Sometimes it might always be half and half, but I think the general expectation I have is that we're doing this together. I'm, I'm not going to sit in the pub five days a week and neither are you, because that sounds ridiculous to me. The final thing I wanna to touch on is friendship. I thought this book was really lovely in the way it covered friendship. So basically, Maku and Lila are actually cousins and Teresa is, I think, was originally Lila's friend. Um, and then obviously she moved to England, but she used to come back every summer and stay with Lila's family. Um, I think because her, basically her mum was like, if you go, like, you can't stay with your dad, which is just so weird and fucks a kid up in its head. Like, why would you do that to your child? But their friendship was really lovely. One, because, like, Teresa and Maku actually kind of basically are only friends because of Lila. So they're drawn together because of Lila. They really didn't like each other growing up, obviously, because Maku just thought Lila was just like overprivileged girl, English girl or whatever. Um, and Teresa just kind of thinks Maku just, you know, not that she's too much in tradition, but she like, like lets people just like walk all over her and lets her husband walk all over her. So they really do clash because of that. But generally their friendship seems to be okay. But then when these women meet certain points in their relationships or certain points in their friendships, there is like bickering and actual truth telling and just full on the kind of thing like when you hold resentment in for too long and it all comes to a head there are certain like really honest conversations that are done in really shouty horrible ways but the things that needed to be said are said and i think francis managed to really depict a real sense of friendship um, at least in the way sort of i understand friendship and things have happened in my group that you know you do keep your mouth quiet at some points but at other points sometimes things come to a head because you're just like what you're doing is wrong or you shouldn't be doing that and you do bicker about it but then after that the bond of your friendship brings you back together and you're kind of like i shouldn't have said that or i should have said i should have said it in a nicer way and you become friends again i guess my only wish in terms of this friendship group is that lila confided in her friends a bit more throughout the whole duration of the book when things are going on in the other women's lives they do confide in each other and i just felt like lila held her back herself back from that and held herself back from the overall like feeling of friendship but overall i really enjoyed this like depiction of friendship i thought it was really raw it was really honest um and it kind of just shows like i don't know what friendship is like when you're just a little bit older and it's not just about like going to the park and drinking or just like being in school and looking over magazines and things like that um it's just really was nice to pick friendship with really adult problems alongside it but i think that is it for this video i feel like i have waffled on for a really long time so we'll see but yeah if you like the sound of this book please do give it a go but yeah i hope you like this video and i hope it gave you a taste of what the issues that this book deals with i really enjoy books like this i feel like these books are kind of like feel good books um it reminds me i think i've said this previously but it reminds me of books like sundowners by leslie loco which is about four women as well but i think they're all from like different different countries and things like that and it's just friendships but I I like that this one was sort of dealing with um the imperfect arrangements that they find themselves with and how they deal with that it was also nice to have a book that was obviously based in ghana and talked about like ghanaian women so that was always really lovely to see let me know if you're thinking about checking out this book and like i said i will be doing an in conversation with francis thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in another video bye